Hi students, welcome to Unit 4, Lesson 4. This is Cognitive Learning. Up to this point, we've really discussed mainly the behaviorist perspective when it comes to learning that our behavior will equal certain consequences. There are theorists out there who say not everything is learned by getting rewards and punishments, that there are some things that we just picked up on our own and that we learn by watching others. And so that's what we'll discuss here. This is the process of observational learning, social learning, and what our brain is doing, what our mental processes are doing when we're learning new material. There are many cognitive factors in learning itself. So think about when we moved to the new school, did anybody have have to show you around when you first got here chances are pretty good yeah and you learned your way around but you don't have to like have a map with you now when you're coming to psychology class if I ask you to picture in your brain right now where's the main office or where's the gym where's the auditorium you'd be able to trace your steps without having to physically get up and trace your steps that's mental processing it's stuff that we learn that we uh, put into our memory without even trying you also see a rat with a maze right there, and I'll tell you the story behind rats in the maze in the following. So remember that cognition is thinking and cognitive learning is learning that is not so mechanic. We learn because we want to. We, we learn it really without efforting much. We seek out knowledge by thinking and watching other people. There's two types that we'll cover here. That is latent learning and observational learning. Now latent learning, latent to be latent is it lies dormant, right? When a caterpillar goes into its cocoon, it's latent. So this is learning that's in our brain that we can tap into just by kind of effortfully processing. The man behind latent learning is named E.C. Tolman and he studied rats and resulted in theories of latent learning and cognitive maps. So he took two different groups of mice, 10 mice that got put into a maze and they had a reward at the end. So the maze, they learn the maze and then they get the, let's say, cheese reward. And then another 10 mice who go through the maze and there is no reward at the end. So the argument is which group of mice is going to be faster when they get put back into the maze? Who's going to get through the maze quicker? The ones that got the rewards or the ones who just got through the maze because they're having a good time trying to find their way out of the maze? Well, the end of the story is they finished at the same amount of time. Whether or not they got a reward for getting through the maze really didn't matter, according to Tolman. That we seek out, we are curious, we wanna to get to the end of the maze just because it's a fun thing to do. What else are we gonna do when we're put in a maze, right? Well, we're gonna to try to find our way out. He also discovered that we have these cognitive maps that we get. We assemble through processes of going through a stinking maze. The same thing has happened to you when it comes to learning the new high school that we you know, had the experience with last year. So latent learning is that which occurs but remains hidden until there's a need to use it. I know a lot of fun trivia stuff, you know, so I'll go to trivia night and be able to pull up random facts kind of easily because at one point I learned it just for fun and now I can pull it up. Rats learning to roam the maze, they have hidden learning that they can tap into once they're put back into that situation. Maybe you've moved to Indian land and you have that cognitive map, which is next, in your brain from your old school or from your old neighborhood. I could drop myself back into my childhood neighborhood right now and be able to get to the, my elementary school just because I did it so many times riding my bike. So it's a mental map of a physical area. The rats had created a mental map of their maze and you do too. If you go back to your elementary school, your old places, you're gonna be able to recall, oh yeah, this is the way to get there. Say you're gonna meet a friend at Dunkin' Donuts for coffee. You know, you have the map of how to get there, maybe from your house, from the school, either way it's there it, you can access it when you need it because our brains are awesome other things that we pick up without really even knowing about it like these cognitive factors in include insight and learning now this man's name is Wolfgang Kohler and he created a problem for these chimpanzees to solve so they're reaching for a bunch of bananas that was suspended up in the air so the chimpanzees are in their cage they can see the fruit they can they know that fruit is delectable and they love it but there's no way to get to them. And so they solve the problem of trying to get to the bananas by stacking up those boxes. They have a moment of insight. And Kohler found that oftentimes when they were working out the problem, they didn't choose like nonsense answers to getting the problem solving skills that weren't going to get them to the thing that they wanted. So they had these understanding 
of solving a problem and they're able to get the fruit reward just by trial and error. So they understood the problem and they rarely tried a solution that didn't work out. The animals reached the solution kind of suddenly. They worked together, they got their reward. We also learn by watching others. Now right now think of a time when you have picked up a new task just by watching someone else. Remember though age, ages back in developmental psychology that are so instrumental in uh, our lives because we're forming new neural networks. That ages three to six where we learn by watching others. Think of you playing store, you're playing house, you're playing whatever games that you played where you were imagining. This was observational learning. Observational learning is in instrumental in childhood development. It is also a large part of our biology. We have these things inside of our brains that light up when performing a certain action or observing an action. So they mirror one another. I can watch you eating an ice cream cone and I can remember, because I've had that experience, what it's like to eat an ice cream cone. So the same parts of my brain will light up even though I'm not involved in the eating the ice cream cone, which is to me awesome because that tells me that I, if I can see myself succeeding at something, it will be so because of the mirror neurons. My body and my brain already know how to do something because I've watched somebody else do it or I've seen myself do it. Mirror neurons and observational learning are super cool. Here's, like I said, your mirror neurons, your brain lights up despite the fact that you may not be involved in the activity. You watch somebody else eat ice cream, the watcher, the images in our brain are identical. I'll have a video of this for you in class and the man behind observational learning and modeling, a term of modeling, is Albert Bandura. Albert Bandura is a superhero when it comes to the cognitive and social learning factors in psychology. He said that we learn by observing others. He showed this by acquire, we acquire knowledge by modeling. He devised a study uh, called the Bobo doll experiment where children watched the adult in the top row here um, play with a doll he called the Bobo doll. It's an inflatable doll. And the adult is hitting it, throwing it, punching it, kicking it. What do you think the child's going to do when it's alone in the room with the Bobo doll? Well, it does the same exact things. It hits it, it throws it, it punches it, it kicks it. And this was the same for boys and girls. Albert Bandura's theories arose in a time in America, uh, the rise of TV with the baby boom generation. So his question was, will aggressive behavior be repeated by the children who are at home watching these TV shows? Observational learning is built on the concept of modeling where we observe and imitate specific behaviors. And that's the conclusion of unit four, lesson four, and this unit. So we've covered a lot of stuff. We've covered uh, classical conditioning, operant conditioning built on the schedules of reinforcement, punishment and reinforcers. We've also talked about cognition and the role that our brain plays in learning, which is going to be continued when we get to the unit on memory.